Hi guys, my name is Andre Graham. I'm here to introduce um, a tutorial series for Academy Class Blog on um, creating an interactive 3D architectural visualization. So what we're going to be doing is starting off with an AutoCAD plan, uh, then uh, finding a, a section of the plan that we want to use because we will be building an interior, uh, so we'll be doing one room, just so we can see it from beginning to end all within the scope of this tutorial. And um, then import that section of the plan into 3D Studio Max and build, the, uh, build our room. And then the twist is that instead of uh, rendering out a still or a video, um, what we're going to be doing is exporting that into Unity and creating our interactive 3D scene there. So throughout the process, we'll bear that in mind. Uh, and when we build the room in 3D Studio Max, we'll, we'll remember to, to do a couple of tweaks so that it's optimized for Unity exporting. OK? So um, as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward. Exploring the plans, uh, the plans from AutoCAD, setting up uh, the plans, and then building the room structure. That is the scope of the first lesson. Uh, you know, and the le lessons after this will, will uh, follow that up with um, unwrapping the room and texturing it for Unity, getting into Unity, building a, a bit of scripts, um, and then publishing it. So let's jump straight into AutoCAD. As you can see, I just have standard architecture plans here. Uh, uh, these are the plans I've used for a project. I've actually ended up building all of this. But for this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is finding a, a room that we like from, from one of the, the floor plans here. And this one looks pretty good, pretty straightforward. You can see it's nice and square, so it won't be, um, it won't be too hard for us to model. As I am trying to keep this tutorial quite short, hopefully we'll be done uh, in 15, 20 minutes for the for the first lesson. Um, so you can see this is this is a layout view. So um, these are all laid out here nicely. Um, so to access the actual plans, the actual model itself, we need to double click in these views, uh, double click to get out of it, because otherwise we won't be able to select anything. Um, so just double click here and click and drag to select everything we want. Um, we can see here that we're not exactly grabbing this line or this line just because they, they go out further, so we will need to cover all that. But that's fine because we can sort of estimate what those will be in 3D Studio Max. So this is really all we need. And what I'm going to do here is just to make exporting and importing faster, I'm just going to copy this and then just quickly um, start up a new drawing and just open the, the default uh, template there. And I'm just going to paste, paste it here, simple control C, control V, um, because we, we can do a bit of a cleanup, which actually is, is, I find it's much easier just to do in AutoCAD. So just clean all of these up, get rid of the annotations. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because, first of all, I don't really want to be doing this in 3D Studio Max. Um, and if you have a lot of these, depending on the graphics card I use, it will slow Max down a lot in the viewport. And I, I don't think we want that while we're working. And this last one here. So this this looks pretty clean. This looks like what we want. Um, it's fine. We can just estimate these in 3D Studio Max. Um, yeah. Let's go. So now just save as. We don't necessarily need to export. Um, one thing, because 3D Studio Max can just import DWGs, one thing that I'll note here is that depending on the version of 3D Studio Max uh, that you're running, you might want to save for backwards compatibility. So I'm just going to go here with an AutoCAD 2010 format. And just we'll just save it as floor plan. So now into 3D Studio Max, we have a brand new scene here. So there you go. Just reset it. Always good practice just to reset 3D Studio Max. And what we need to do is go to import, import, and then we need to identify our files, so I'll just go in my little tutorials folder here, the lesson one. This is the plan we just saved, and just click open. Oh, one thing I f did forget to do um, is actually set up the units for the scene before importing. So if we go to units, customize unit setup, the, the AutoCAD plan is already set up in millimeters, so we want our scene system to be the same here in 3D Studio Max. So if you, once you go to Unit Setup, this will bring that up. I mean, usually it's on generic units, 
I always work in millimeters, so mine is already set to millimeters, but just make sure yours is as well. So I'll just click OK, and now we can go and import that, um, and we'll be sure that there's no scaling issues. So in the import dialog, um, just hit rescale and set it to millimeters, just so we're, we're double sure <laughs> that there's not going to be any, any problems with the scale. Uh, we'll well nearby vertices set to one millimeter. I don't think that we're going to have a distance of less than one millimeters between two vertices in our scene. So this is this is absolutely fine. And uh, just click OK to import. And here here are our plans. As you can see, there's there's a couple of issues here. Well, one mainly, which is the fact that some of these vertices are uh, are all over the place in in Z space. Uh, uh, an easy way to correct that is just select everything, and this is just because of how how the plans were made in AutoCAD, and you'll get a lot of that uh, with your plans, and especially uh, uh, with with the bigger plans that use a lot of XREF objects and imported furniture objects, um, you, you'll get a lot of this. So just go and apply an edit spline to everything, just so we can edit everything at once. Uh, go to vertices mode, and hit Control A to select everything, and what you want to do is. I mean, one way to do it is just to to scale it down like this, but you need to give it a couple of passes, and it, it might not be perfect, so if you want a perfect result, just go to non-uniform scale, and pick pick a view, so we'll just pick the perspective view, hit F12 to bring in the, the, the transform type in menu, so here you can see, so you can mess with the scales, and because it's non-uniform, it only affects one axis, so what, the one we want is the Z scale, and just hit this to zero. And now we know that everything is on that scale. So uh, uh, everything is absolutely planar now, all of the vertices. Now these are this these will be on different layers usually. So yeah, they are on different layers. So this means we might not be able to group them. No, we can't group them. That's fine. Um, just drag them in here approximately. Because what we'll be doing is we'll actually be drawing over these. Um, and one of the ways um, we're going to be do that, doing that is uh, by going to the Create menu and selecting Shapes. Uh, with, just, with just a basic line, we're going to be drawing the outline of these walls here, uh, which is really just a square. So um, I'm going to be showing, you, rather than drawing a rectangle, I'm going to be showing you how to use the line tool just because uh, you'll probably want to apply these to, to objects that aren't squares. So with convex and concave corners, this is the best practice. Um, enable snaps, so this snap tool here. If you right click on it, it'll bring the options. Uh, by default, set the grid points, which makes your cursor snap to the grid points here, as you see. But we don't want that. What we want is to snap it to vertices. So now we see that our cursor just just snaps to these points. So it makes it easier for us to draw. So if you just pick the corners, this is a problem. We're missing the this line here. So we'll just go here and then we'll move that. And I think we are just following the green line. We'll um, we'll ignore the white line, which was the the installation in the plans. I would imagine. So just go with the green line. Uh, again, we're missing a corner, so we'll just go here and click this, and this should close the spline, which is absolutely fine. Uh, Right-click to escape the draw tool. So now if we go to our modify, this is an edible spline, so we can select vertices mode, go into vertices, and we see that this wants to be on the same line as this, so all we need to do is really go in here and copy the x-coordinates, select that vertice, copy the x-coordinates, paste it over to this one. Another way you could do that is actually with snap enabled. And if we get our axis constraints menu in here, let's just drag it in here. So this, this actually constrains your movement to an axis. Uh, we can use snap use axis constraints. So that should, because by default, when snapping something, it will move in all directions. But let's say we just want to move it, in this case, on the x-axis. If we use snap use axis constraints, then we should be able to do that. And here we go. If by first you need to click on the actual arrow itself. So once you click on the arrow, and then we can snap it to this. So there you go. That's two methods of, of doing that. Oh, I'm just uh, going to pause this for a bit just because of background noise. And we're back.
sorry guys just had to pause because of, um, of some background noise something happening outside of the building but that's over now so back to the plans we had just drawn our wall here and one thing that I will actually do is I will put all of these on the same layer just so that we can group them so it's easier to work with overall so if we go to manage layers uh, we see all of our layers here. Uh, we have all of the objects selected. So the only thing that we need to do is create a new layer and we'll just call this one plans. Plan. There we go. Um, and add all selected objects. So now everything that we selected should be in there. I see we have a couple of ones that didn't, and those are probably just blocks, yeah, that's what they were. So this, this is again just uh, um, a bit of, of junk coming through from AutoCAD. Uh, what we can do is just click on this, select it, and as you can see it's it's nothing. Oh. Just delete it, that was, it was something that this object was parented to, but uh, we, we don't care about that. So just select select these guys, delete select delete select delete so now if we go ahead and select all the plans we can group them yeah so there you go the only thing that we do lose did lose here was the color information but I think this is simple enough that we can we can see what everything is um, now we have this pivot it's another just set it on be on zero. There we go. And this should be on zero as well then. I think the coordinates is a bit mis messed up for this, so let me just have a look here and effect pivot. Yeah, there we go. The pivot is just down here. So um center to object doesn't appear to work. So let's just move it up here. I mean we can even use the snap on this. So if we grab the arrow and just snap it to a point and there we go, we've got exactly what we want. So now we can set to zero, and it's exactly where we want it. Okay, so we can power through. So now let's 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 just create the outer walls. Um, a good thing to do. What we need to do is is just create the depth of these, and and an easy way to do it is just go to, uh, select spline mode, and then uh, just scroll down to your uh, to outline, which is here. Here we go. So. When you use outline, it, it does exactly that. It just creates an outline for your wall. So um, that's what we need. But one thing that I want to do before is just go go to segment mode and click refine. So refine in segment mode allows us to add more vertices on here. And what we want to do is just add more vertices where we see the uh, the the holes will be for for our windows and doors. So we have in in the bathroom we have a little window here and if you're unsure about these things always go back and have a look at the plans for reference so you can see there's a there's a window here there there's a window here and then we have our door here and this is the only thing uh, that is going to be cut from our walls so just quickly add the vertices here and here here and here uh, position doesn't matter right away, but just because we're gonna snap them in place. So now, if we hit one, so that's going to vertex mode. Just grab these points, and again, using our snap, and I use the S key just to toggle this on and off. Using our snap, we can snap these in place, so we know they're exactly where they need to be. Just grab the arrow, snap it in place. Grab the arrow, snap it in place. Here we go. And the last one. No, oh, we actually want it here. No, I mean, this look, looks pretty exactly here, but let's go. All right. We're not going to be cutting these right now, but they'll be useful for later when we create our geometry. These points hopefully should stay in there. So now we can go ahead and create our outline. I mean, we can we can estimate it, but we can also just head back to our plans and have a look uh, for a fitness of uh, for a, a thickness of walls. Uh, we can't exactly see it here, but usually these things are like 50 or 60 centimeters. So let's see. Mm. 
let's just grab this thickness here. This is the easiest one to do. That's uh, 303. So oh, that's quite thin. But well, I guess it's without the insulation. So that's 30 centimeters thick, 300 millimeters. So if we jump back into 3D Studio Max, if we put 300 in here, or rather minus 300, should give us the thickness. And there it is. That's what we want for the most part. Uh, I see there's a bit of a problem here, but we can, we can just roll with it. Let's see if we go to segment mode. Let's just put this in place to make sure it's it is exactly where we want it. Here, select this segment. Here we go. This guy. Yeah, that looks right. So I'm just following the walls, not the insulation so this one wants to be here here we go yeah that looks about right okay so now we now we have this this outline of a shape this section of a shape so what we can do is just simply add an extrude modifier to it now for extrude to work properly all these should be planar all the vertices should be on the same plane and um, the spline should be closed. There should be no um, unwelded vertices, basically. Otherwise, it, it won't work. And if we quickly hit uh, four to get wireframe mode, we see that now we have these cuts, these edges, right where we need them. So let's just uh, move this to zero. There you go. Uh, and let's get the height for this. So quickly go back to the plans for a reference. And now we need to find uh, a cross section. Oh, so this is what I'm talking about with the layouts. Uh, I was just uh, scrolling in the layout here, so I need to double click to exit that. Uh, now, this is what we need, a cross section. Let's find one with the actual rooms in it. So this is this looks like what we need. Um, and we can see that the total height is 2400. So if you jump back into the 3D Studio Max, 2400, and there we go. That's That's exactly what we need. And now that's that's it. We have our walls in here. So what we need to do is just convert this to an editable poly um, so that we can start editing it. And the first thing that we do want to do is is get get these uh, windows uh, and doors in here. So we need to create the edges for where we need to cut where the, the uh, bottom and top uh, edges of the windows and doors will be. So if we just select all of the edges, uh, this is a simple model, so I can just click and drag, or I can just click on an edge here and click ring to select everything. But that sometimes will not get everything, so it's just safer to do it this way. And if we click connect, that this will create an edge going across all of these edges. Um, and now we just need to find out at what height that needs to be for the bottom edge. So again, going into our plans, we see that the bottom edge for the window is at 775, and because the base of our object is set at zero, so we can just put this on the y axis at 775. Let's see if we can do that from here, from offset world. Uh, we can't do it absolutely just because we're in object mode. So, one thing that we'll need to do here is create uh, a helper object. So, a helper object is just something that we can use to, to see what dimensions are. We know we need 775. So if we just create a standard cube and set all the dimensions, 775, 775, 775, we know that's what it needs to be. This is the height that we're looking for. And again, just with using that snap move, we select all of these vertices and click and drag on the x uh, on the z axis. And there we go. This is exactly where we need it to be now at 775. And the other the, no, the other edge, the top edge, will sit at, well, 2400 minus 775. So let's just bring out the calculator. 2400 minus 775, 1625. So this edge should be at 1625. Jump back into max. 1625 on our helper object. So that's where we want to be. 
go into edge mode and now just connect these guys again and we have we have a new edge the repeat and there we go now we have the the height of our window in here and that that looks about right yeah i think that looks right uh the last thing we'll need is the the height of the door which i see is a little taller than the window actually so let's just quickly get the height whoa okay that's what happens uh, it's probably because we need to go into the view itself so once we're in the view it should get that coordinate system let's make sure we get the exact points that we want so from here to here there we go that's what I want so that's 2100 so just the same thing in 3D Studio Max set our helper object to 2100 and that will be the top of our door so this is where our door is select these edges just hold control to select multiple edges and now we can drag these upwards so let's go here in our left view click on our arrow you can see the edge there and just snap it there and there we go uh, that, that is the height of our door so now we can just go to polygon mode select these guys just hold control again to select everything and hit delete um, from the door we won't need this bottom edge actually what that did is it deleted everything just because um, Xtrude didn't create edges for these planes uh, but it's fine we'll, uh, we'll recreate those so yeah just delete that or better way to do it, more efficient way to do it rather is to first cut it and again we are using snap just to snap it to the vertices here so from this vertex to this vertex and yeah we see that created that line there and cut this from here to here and now we should be able to select just that there we go we uh, we were able to keep that and uh, now we need just need to close these off so one way to quickly do it is to go to border mode and well actually border mode won't work here just because these are open here as well so we need to go to edge and select both of these uh, two parallel edges and click bridge and this will just create uh, a face between those let me actually just full screen this so you can see it better there we go and if we repeat for these edges oh, not that one this one just bridge and by using bridge it also creates this line is here because now that this is a close one we can we can go to border and click on it and it selects all the open edges and we can just hit cap and cap will create that face but you won't create this line here so then you have to go in and cut again um, so I'd rather just select them and hit bridge there we go. So there we go. That's the geometry for that. Use the same method here, and we can actually just select these two. As long as they're not connected, bridge should work just fine. But did it work? Nope. So not even this case. So we just need to select these two. Here we go. Bridge. There we go. Bridge is quite funny like that. Like sometimes you won't work if the edges are connected. Like let's say if I were to um, select all of these edges here and I'll click bridge on that. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes you won't. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the specifics of it are. What makes it work sometimes and what doesn't is just sometimes you just have to try and see. You might just get lucky. And let's do the same for the window. Let me get it now. Here we go. Let's click bridge, and now we can just go because there's there's no more cuts here, so we can just cap these. And that's fine. And that's it. We we have our basic walls in in here. There's nothing more we need to do to the walls. Now what we need to do is actually create the interior walls, and just create the floor and the 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 ceiling for it. But I think the ceiling is the last thing we are going to create just because we um 
will want to you know, just orbit around this and see inside. Uh, one thing that I'll do is just delete, delete this face. And this is, again, just because we're going to have this into Unity, uh, move this into Unity. Um, it's best just to try to cut geometry wherever wherever you can. And this is one way of doing it. We're never gonna going to see this top bit. It's going to um, be hidden by the ceiling. But we might change our minds. We might take the ceiling off just so we can see inside it. So we don't know. But it's quite easy to to put that back in place uh, just using the, the bridge technique we've, we've, uh, we've just seen. But for now, let's just keep it as that. Uh, let's create these interior walls. So if we move back to our... Uh, our four screen layout here. We can start drawing these in. So if we go to shapes, line, hit S, and here we go, we can start drawing these in. This is the actual door frame, so I'm not going to draw that. It's one spine. And we can actually untick start new shape. Just so. Um, we, even though we're creating what looks like a new shape, it will still be attached to the other shape. There's still just one object. So that's fine because we want to extrude them at the same time. We want to do the same operations on both of them. Uh, here we go. And now we have that spline. And if we just put the extrude modifier on it, there we go. That's our interior walls are in there. It's looking good. Let's just quickly create the, the floor. Uh, I mean, in this case, creating the floor is as easy as drawing a box uh, with this with a snap in here. Just draw the box. Once you have the corners that you want, you can release snap, so you can drag it freely. But again, your example might not be as simple as as a square. So one thing that you can do is just go to Edit Poly, go to Edge Mode, select select all of the outer edges. So. Yeah, the simplest way to do it. Let's, let's just isolate this object. Here we go. So now we can see just that. So select this edge, all of the all of the outer outer edges. And again, there's no reason I should be doing this for for this particular one, but just to show you guys another way of doing it. Uh, now we can actually create a shape from those edges. So we have create shape from selection. And if we set it to linear, just so all of the vertices um, are set to corners, they're not smooth or bezier's or anything like that. Uh, get out of isolation mode. Select that new spine we just created, and there it is, shape zero zero one. So now, if we isolate this selection, there's the shape we just created, and we need to close that gap, obviously. So I think we can just move that over that one, then select them. Um, Fuse just to make sure they are in the same spot and then weld. And this should be a closed shape. Uh, we, we don't care about these points. We don't need all of this edge data in here or that vertex data, rather. So there you go. That's that's the um, footprint of, of our walls, basically. And we can use this just to create a floor. So just extrude this. Let's give the floor a thickness of 30, uh, 300 millimeters, so 30 centimeters, same, same um, thickness as our walls. And just move it in here. Oh, need to click on the Z arrow. Why is this not happening? There we go. It's getting worried there for a second. <laughs> and, and that's it. This is the basic layout of our room created. Um, we can just hide these plans for now. Um, you can just hide them in here, by, or you could just hide the, the layer that we created. So let's see, hide. Oh. Our floor is actually created on the plan layer, so let's just add it to the default layer. Add selected object. So there you go. Let's see if anything else was created on the plans layer. Yep, it looks like our inner walls are in there as well. So add them to the default layer. Yep, that's it. So there we go. This is this is our room. Um, very quickly done. Uh, next next thing we're going to do is actually get the windows, the actual windows uh, and door geometry in here uh, and, and start working on the details. But as far as we're concerned, this is this is what we need for our, our basic geometry. Okay, and I think that will conclude the first lesson.
hopefully, like I said, just very simple stuff. Uh, getting the plans from AutoCAD, getting them into 3D Studio Max, just doing a setup that works for you. This is what works for me. You you might find something a, a bit different for yourself, but um, just for doing a lot of these, I found that uh, this is the fastest way that I can achieve the results that I want uh, and be very very precise as well. Um, sometimes you might you know you you might just want to use the, the the shapes that come from AutoCAD themselves rather than drawing them redrawing them again. You you might say that that's a, a bit of a waste of time, but what I found is that a lot of times the information will come from CAD uh, with vertices being unwelded or even like uh, the lines being on different planes so you can't just grab and extrude them and rather than then going and debugging those plans and finding out where the error is finding out which vertices need to be welded uh, etc um, this, this is just easier uh, so now for our next lessons like I said we'll be adding those details we'll be adding the doors uh, and the windows in and whatever else we need in here um, now I happen to know that what's missing from the plans is that is an actual wardrobe in here so we'll need to create uh, it's a built-in wardrobe so we'll need to create a bit more of interior walls in here and we'll be covering that uh, next week as well so let me know if you've enjoyed this uh, please post any comments in the comment section below uh, any questions I'll, I'll do my best to answer and also any any r tips or uh, recommendations you might have for for our next tutorial and things you might want to see, see more of, see less of, just let me know and I'll do my best to accommodate. Alright, thank you guys and uh, I'll see you next time.